Hey guys, my name is Shivam Kejriwal and I'm a first year PhD student here at the National University of Singapore. In this video, I want to share with you my first six months experience as a PhD student, what I've learned, um, what I wish I did a bit differently, my whole experience, I want to document it um, through this YouTube video on my channel and maybe help a few people who are planning to do a PhD in the future along the way. So first of all, a brief overview of my trajectory so far in academia. I pursued my Bachelor of Science in Physics from Shivnada University in India. It was a four-year bachelor's program and uh, although I was mostly towards the top of my class, it was a challenging one. There were some really good semesters, some really ugly ones, but all of that is in the past and actually also documented in a similar format on this channel. Throughout my undergrad, I have been interested in astrophysics and cosmology and I have pursued a few projects here and there in the subject. I did a year-long project in cosmology, for example, in my third year under a faculty at the institute and for my fourth year project I got lucky to get an external advisor for pursuing a project in gravitational waves. I was about to get luckier because the same faculty now at National University of Singapore asked if I would like to join him as a PhD student under his guidance and I was more than happy to do so. I had to go through the same application process as everyone else. I had to make sure that my GRE scores were above the threshold criteria of 320 but except for that I was almost certain that my application to NUS would get accepted given that I have a faculty recommending me to the admissions department. And so here I am at the end of six months into my PhD. First semester is over, the summer break is almost over, the next semester starts within about a week. And I'm sitting inside my room which I'm actually supposed to shift from uh, today or tomorrow. But anyways, I thought it would be a nice little wrap up of the first semester and the summer break before I shift to a new setup. So rather than talking about everything chronologically, I'd want to categorize my experiences in three major categories. Firstly, I'll talk about the things that were harder than expected. Secondly, I'll talk about the things that were easier than expected. Finally, I'll try to wrap it all up by concluding my major takeaways and what I see in the near future like next semester and in long term. Alright, so first of all, talking about the things that were harder than expected. And the number one thing on this list has to be self-discipline. And this is something I've struggled with throughout my life. I'm not as much of a morning person. I like to work rather late at night, towards midnight or even later, like 2-3 a.m. I've pulled all-nighters as an undergrad, so I'm definitely more of a night owl. However, as a PhD, you are required to collaborate a lot more often, which needs you to work during the regular working hours. Additionally, the Singapore culture is more of a daytime culture, so people usually wake up earlier, have lunch and dinner earlier, and go to bed earlier, so all of that makes it a little bit difficult for a night owl like me. As an undergrad, you are required to do a lot more courses compared to a PhD, maybe four or five versus just one or two as a PhD. Not having a pre-made timetable set by your courses again forces you to be more self-disciplined and set a timetable for yourself. Remember as little kids we used to write down a timetable on the sheet of paper and never follow it? Well, as a PhD you have to make that piece of paper and this time you are forced to follow it. If you are already someone uh, who has a lot of self-discipline as an undergrad or as a master's student, I think you should have relatively low problems in that area. A bunch of fighter jets just flew over my building. Another major thing that I really struggled with and which I think was harder than I expected was being self-sufficient in the sense that Singapore doesn't have a lot of options for food, especially for someone who is vegetarian. Of course, you can keep a cook or you can just have food outside in fancy restaurant. But when you're on a limited budget and limited time, that becomes a little bit difficult. My fix for that is cooking for myself, cleaning my own room, and doing my own laundry. The latter too is being done by everyone, but cooking especially has been really challenging in the initial days at least. Now I kind of enjoy it. It's sort of like an excuse to get out of my room and actually um, work a little bit with my hands because otherwise I'm just in front of the computer typing and coding all the time. Talking about limited budgets, this is the first time I'm also managing my own, own money completely. I mean as an undergrad I used to do part-time tutoring which did give me a little bit of pocket money here and there but that was definitely not as hardcore as the money management that I'm doing right now and that's something I think would be common with all international students studying anywhere at any stage undergrad, masters or PhD but that's definitely something to be aware of. 
all right so those are the two things that i majorly found challenging now let me talk about two things that i found rather easy compared to what i had thought um, would be my experience here at national university of singapore the first one surprisingly is the research work that i'm doing right now it's by no means easy i'm partaking three projects at the same time while a fourth project is on hold right now and a lot more ideas bubbling in my mind my advisor's mind that we can potentially work on in the future so it's by no means easy but it's definitely easier than i thought it would be especially in my case i haven't done a masters program so i'm coming directly from a bachelor's degree and so i thought that it would be rather challenging directly transitioning into a phd however so far my experience has been rather surprisingly easy and straightforward it's giving me exactly what i expected and i'm able to manage everything much more efficiently than i thought i would be i think this has to do with the fact that even as an undergrad i used to push myself quite a lot so i used to do not just my courses but also partake in a lot of research projects i used to actively participate in club events such as the astronomy club the physics society etc so i have been really active throughout my undergrad i have been working hard i have been utilizing my time quite judiciously as an undergrad however i can't take all of the credit because uh, shimla university my undergrad institute has also played a role in it in the sense that in the fourth year of my undergrad i was supposed to do a thesis project which i did with my advisor here at nus so first of all it provided me the opportunity to pursue direct research under the advisory of an external supervisor and second of all fourth year was mostly what it is like to be a phd student the course load was very low so i only did two courses in one semester similar to what i am doing right now and most of the focus was on the first hand research that i was conducting at the time similar to what i am doing right now however that's not usually the norm in india you usually do a 3 year undergrad degree followed by 2 years of masters followed by a phd program if you are not uh fed up with academia at that point so those 3 years of an undergrad are definitely not enough to provide you a smooth transition directly to a phd um but you can utilize your time in your masters for example to replicate what you would be doing in your phd take a few courses but do a lot of research um and i think through that um anyone who wants to pursue a phd but isn't right now can ensure that this transition is much smoother Okay so the second thing that I found easier than I expected have to be the courses so far. I only took two courses in my first semester at NUS. Those two are graduate level courses so I was expecting them to be quite difficult and demanding. However that hasn't been the case but that also has to do with the fact that it was my first semester and I wasn't doing a whole lot of research in the first one or two months which are the foundation months of any course and i hope that the remaining two semesters here at nus for which i have to take up more courses it remains the same all right so for the final section the third section of this video i want to talk to you about some new experiences that i didn't anticipate at all um in my first 6 months of phd and the most important one here has to be the experience i got for an international workshop in italy in june this year so one day my advisor randomly suggested that there's a workshop happening in trieste italy on a topic very similar to what i am researching on and he thought that it would be really helpful if i could attend the workshop and gain some exposure but the twist was that my advisor wasn't going and i was supposed to give a presentation so this was my first time attending an international workshop It's been barely half a year since I joined my PhD. I'm supposed to go without my advisor, so there's no one to defend me there, and I have to present in this international workshop in front of a bunch of people I never met. I'm so glad to say that it all went really smoothly. I have a video up on the channel uh, about the whole experience in Italy. And finally, I think most importantly, I want to mention the new experience I have of being in Singapore in the first place. It's a beautiful place. Um it's a really interesting culture. It's a really interesting set of people that I've met so far. And hopefully the remaining 3.5 years that are left here between me and Singapore, I can get to experience a lot more of it. Probably 6 months from now, I will be making another video about my experience in my next semester. Uh, next semester is going to be kind of crazy because I'm supposed to do one heavy course along with two teaching assistantships. So um, it's going to be a packed semester. On top of that, I'm somehow supposed to continue doing research, participate in workshops and conferences. It's it's going to be a little bit crazy, but I hope in any case it's going to be exciting. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Shubham Kejriwal, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.